UBC as part of an ambitious project involving instructors, staff, and talking squirrels, we are developing videos to help you with your writing skills, because communicating science effectively is an incredibly important part of being a good scientist. Grammar Squirrel has just come back from an interesting science presentation about communicating uncertainty. Because one of her friends is interested, and because she knows it's a good way of reviewing what she's just learned, Grammar Squirrel decides to talk about the key messages. First, her friend asks why science is uncertain. Grammar Squirrel explains that there is a lot of creativity in science, and very often there are different ways of interpreting results. Scientific knowledge is like the universe, too. It's always expanding. So, what we thought was true 10 years ago might no longer be interpreted the same way now that we've gathered more knowledge about it. And, additionally, most scientific studies are based on probability. So, even very convincing results are not usually used to show proofs. Proof in science is incredibly rare. So what's the big deal, thinks Grammar Squirrel's friend. Why do we need to take so much care when we communicate this uncertainty? Well, as Grammar Squirrel then says, the very nature of science means that you must touch on this, whether you're communicating to a scholarly audience or to a general one. Because probabilities are critical in allowing your peers to judge the interpretations that you make. And this research is often simplified when communicated to the wider public to make it more accessible, which, in turn, means it's very important to be accurate. If it's not, people might be left with the wrong idea. Consider the following example. Grammar Squirrel's friend has just given a presentation about a potentially worrying development in British Columbia and tells Grammar Squirrel that it went really badly. A new fungus is spreading rapidly throughout the province, and mathematical models predict that there is a 2.06% chance of it reaching the university campus. If it does, there is then a 24.61% chance that it will infest all the acorns on the ground, in which case there would be no food for the winter, and a 73.18% chance that it would infest some of the acorns on the ground. She quotes these statistics directly, and then tells the audience that if the fungus does arrive, there is about a 1 in 4 chance that they'll have nothing to eat. After looking up and realising just how worried they all are, she tells them not to worry too much, because it's not that likely to happen. Grammar Squirrel is shocked and realises how right her teacher was about the importance of communicating uncertainty effectively. She says the way her friend worded things was confusing, and it made the possibility of the famine hitting the campus sound way more likely than it really was. To avoid this, and help with communicating uncertainty in the future, she has five tips to follow. She says it is important to 1. Make numbers easy to interpret 2. Contextualise those numbers with a comparison 3. Choose descriptive language very carefully 4. Use figures as well as words and 5. Communicate timelines. To make numbers easy to interpret, she says it is important to avoid any potential framing bias. For example, her friend told people that if the fungus arrived, there was about a 1 in 4 chance that they'd all have nothing to eat. By mentioning the negative aspect here, it was framed in a negative way. The same point could have been made by saying that even if the fungus did arrive, there was still a 3 in 4 chance that some acorns would not be affected. In reality, there was only a 2.06% chance that the fungus would reach the campus, and then a 24.61% chance 
that it would infect all of the acorns. So, the chance of everyone going hungry was really less than 1%. Additionally, the 2.06 and 24.61 just added confusion. It would have been better to have just said about 2% and about 25%, which together gave a combined chance of about 0.5%. To be completely accurate, she should also have said that the chance of the squirrels having to tighten their belts when it came to mealtimes was actually about 1.5%, because if the fungus did reach the campus, there was then a 73% chance that it would infect some of the acorns. To help contextualise these numbers further, Grandma Squirrel says a comparison would be a really good idea. For example, most people would struggle to equate a 0.5% chance to something meaningful that they could actually picture. So, why not contextualise it by saying something like this? That's about a 1 in 200 chance. So, the chance of all of us going hungry is tiny. It's about the same as being dealt a pair of aces from one deck of cards when you're playing a poker game. And we know that doesn't happen very often. Perhaps most important of all is to choose your descriptive language very carefully. For example, Grandma Squirrel's friend told the worried squirrels that the famine hitting was not that likely, which could be interpreted very differently. Seeing as the collective likelihood of everyone going hungry was about 0.5%, she could have allayed some fears by saying something like, mm, it's very unlikely, or it's extremely unlikely. But remember that even these simple qualifiers will be interpreted differently, which is why it's wise to also provide the numbers. Another good tactic is to use figures as well as the words you settle on to quantify the uncertainty. For the earlier example, something like this would have worked well as it gives a visual impression of how unlikely it really was that the fungus would spread and ruin all of the acorns. And finally, communicating timelines can help people manage their hopes and fears that are tied up to the uncertainty of something happening. For example, telling the worried squirrels that they would likely know whether the fungus had been controlled by a spray-based fungicide by the end of the week, when those results were in, would give them a timeline to follow. One other important thing to bear in mind, especially when communicating to a scholarly audience, is that statistical significance does not necessarily translate into real-world importance. For example, if the fungicide removed the fungus from 50% more trees than did another older fungicide, this would be highly statistically significant. But this statistical significance might not translate into success in the real world if a relatively high proportion of trees still carried live fungus after the application. For example, the new fungicide might be better than the old one, but it's possible that neither are all that effective. As a quick recap, remember to follow Grammar Squirrel's five tips when communicating uncertainty. Because if you don't put these tips into practice, your audience might well leave with the wrong idea. Mm -hmm.